Hello everyone, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode, we're going to begin by unlocking a new technology, and that is miniaturization. Uh, the main reason for that is because I actually want some sort of stack decoupler or separator in the 0.625 meter uh, form factor, and that's because I plan to make a really small probe. And uh, so we've got a stack separator here that we can use, but also we do get the Clampatron docking port junior, so that we can do rendezvous missions. I mean, rendezvous technically, I don't know if it actually requires docking, but um, we might as well do some docking while we're at it. I don't actually know if we have RCS thrusters yet. Uh, we probably don't, maybe. Anyway, but uh, first things first, let's do this. And the only contract we've got right now is contract to get science from space around Minmus. And that's what my little probe is going to do. Okay, so somebody asked why I liked the Ant engine versus, say, the Spark engine. I like both, but basically it's because they make things like this possible. And as you can see, we've got the Ant engine here and two of the Oscar B fuel tanks. There's that stack separator I wanted. We also got this adapter. And we've got just two instruments at the top here, a thermometer and the Geiger counter. Uh, it's not very streamlined. Probably we should really have a fairing, but we haven't unlocked fairings yet. Uh, but yeah, and then uh, four solar panels, we've got batteries here, and we've got the ant engine. Uh, we've got the vacuum stats here, and you can see this little probe has 3,201 meters per second. Um, its thrust to weight ratio is a mere 0.33, but that's fine for in space. Um, the sea level engines are four spark engines here, and we've got, well, sea level thrust to weight ratio is 1.28, which should be fine. And then in vacuum, a total of 3,880 meters per second. Uh, sea level 3,274, so not too bad there either. Um, yeah, that, that, that's all you need. I don't know if it's the most cost efficient thing because we are using a number of engines here, right? Uh, they're 240 a piece. Still, I think it's, it's pretty good. Um, you could argue a number of dif different things, but certainly you can't say that the ant engine is the wrong engine to use here. If we uh, take this off, it had 3,200. We put a spark engine on instead. It's got uh, 2,600 something, so uh, obviously the ant engine is better in this particular case. And we've got the mini reaction wheel in the probe of Obadine Octo, which should be enough for orientation to point us in the right direction when we do our things. Okay, well, let's try it out. I haven't tried anything like this in a while, but the numbers work out. It's just a matter of whether the aerodynamics is going to mess with me or not. Uh, there's a minor aerodynamic horror show up here. But once we start uh, exploring other planets and the moons around, say, Jewel, uh, this sort of design philosophy will help us out. And the ant engine, of course. Off we go. Knowing that this is aerodynamically problematic, I'm just going to go straight up for a little while. Alright, now well, I'll take a chance. Oh no, uh, it's wobbly, it's wobbly. Uh, oh man. Yeah. Uh, well, I knew that would be the case. Don't panic. Maybe I should have spin stabilized it or something. It feels like it wants to be spin stabilized. Okay, I think we're through the worst of it. Let's just make sure we have a nice high apoapsis for the ant engine to do the rest of it. I don't know, we might have lost too much. Mm, that's not a good sign. We're actually reducing velocity. Definitely not a good sign. I think we can just go horizontal. What's the burn time on this? Yeah, 10 minutes. Fins. I really need to use fins more often. Uh, will we make orbit? It's still a shot. All right, I think, I mean, we're, we're going to dip into the atmosphere a little bit, but I think we're actually going to manage to make it here. 
What if we, like, continue burning like this? Ooh, that's a little bit lopsided. I'd like to hit Minmus orbit. Well, okay, Minmus is over there, but... Uh, at that apoapsis, so no, that's not doable. We have to just get into orbit first. Downside is we're gonna have to lift this side up because it's still in the atmosphere. But yeah, we'll uh, stop it there. We gotta lose a little bit of altitude, but then once we get to apoapsis, we should attempt to circularize. Still got 1,300. That should be enough. Okay, and now let's plot to head to Minmus using an off-plane transfer, and that means burning from just behind this descending node. Well, there we go. Uh, no mid-course adjustment necessary. We can still get arbitrarily close to Minmus. You can see 18 kilometer periapsis there. Our approach is going to look interesting, though. It's sort of polarish, but then again, if you're going to do sciences, polarish is not too bad. Well, there's the moon, and we actually saw the moon try to interfere with our orbit when I was plotting, so... We'll see. Hopefully, it'll leave us be. I mean, we could, like, get a boost from the moon, but it's hardly necessary. I don't know if that twinkle is Minmus. Let me get the labels up. Show names on mouse over. Yep, that's Minmus right there. Uh, we're a little bit off on timing, you can see. But it still works. Uh, okay, two, 232 kilometers will be fine for now. Um, because of our bad timing, it's a little bit off. But anyway, on we go. Uh-oh. We lost communication. Okay, well, we're going to come back around. You can see we've got a trip back in, so... It's just, I don't know if we can manage another Minmus encounter after this. We don't have a whole lot of fuel. And I doubt extending the antennae is going to make any difference. Oh, it does. Okay, well, uh, alternate plans then. Our periapsis is still fine. It's just a matter of when can we meet up with Minmus again. We don't have a huge amount of delta V, just 387. Note in 82 days, though. Well, it's not like we're doing anything else. Engine malfunctioned on lunar landing one. We shouldn't have a... Well, it's in solar orbit, so... Whatever was going on on that mission, I trust there isn't a Kerbal on board, right? Yeah, well, I, I don't care about that mission anymore. Let's see. Um, okay, I, I don't need messages. I definitely don't need messages about Doman's wreckage. Okay, let's stay focused here. Well, we have our approach to Minmus. And if we wanted, we could hit the moon on the way back in, but I don't think so. Now... With the antennae out, do we have communication? Oh yeah, easily. Okay, we are in Mimesis' vicinity. And temperature, We, I think we've done the, yeah, we've done this. We probably need to get into orbit and get low over. Um, if we haven't done that already, maybe we have, because we did send that other probe. We can definitely make orbit. Ah, uh, radiation scan in space near Minmus has been done before. Oops, I didn't mean to reset the camera. And so is the temperature scan. Well, we are in orbit. I sort of wonder if we could like land. I don't think we have that much. If we hadn't uh, done so many flippy things, uh, with the first stage, then we probably could have landed this. Or at least plopped it down somehow. Well, as it is, we'll just get some null science in order to fill the contract. So, let's just transmit this. If that is allowed, yep, the contract 
is fulfilled. Let's go back to Space Center and do something completely different. Well, when I say completely different, I mean we're gonna head back to Min Mist and plant a flag on it, apparently, because we've got this contract. But first, I notice we have a Rescue Philippe from Orbit of Kerbin. Well, I can't resist getting Philippe Kerman. Uh, that, that is a must. So we're going to get Philippe Kerman back. Uh, and hopefully Philippe will be a pilot. We will see. So first, a rescue mission. Oh wait, before I leave this screen, I noticed build a new orbital station around the moon. Well, I surely want to do that. Uh, it does require having a pilot on the station to fulfill the contract, but eventually we will want to do this anyway, and it's going to give us 13 years, so why not? We'll pick that up too. There's a build a new surface outpost on Duna thing, but that's that's a little bit further ahead. It also requires 4,000 units of liquid fuel at the outpost, so yeah, we'll wait on that. A new orbital station around Kerbin. Uh, it also requires the liquid fuel in the station and a facility supporting seven Kerbals, and it doesn't pay that well. Um, I think I'll stick to the moon one for now. Okay, we've done this sort of thing before, and I'm a uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of guy, so we're just using the same kind of mission, and hopefully we'll get the same successful result. So, launch. Okay, terrier time. I think if we go just a little bit above the orbit, we can actually make the rendezvous while circularizing our orbit. Let's see. I don't want to push it though. Eh, it's not worthwhile. Okay. Nope, there's the terrier. Okay. We've still got the almighty one kill newton thruster. Oh, I forgot to remove the carbon dioxide tanks this time. Okay, that gets us a tangency. And once we pass these orange markers, we should get a new indication of uh, where we are and we can probably pull our apoapsis down okay now the orange markers have switched places so that on the next go around we would be behind the target but we can fix that by changing our apoapsis it always drifts a little there's always this little enforced pilot error as far as SAS is concerned well, that'll put us within render range, so that'll do for now. Okay, Philippe Kerman is still alive. We have found Philippe Kerman. Hopefully all the Fuar and Oxygen stuff will update properly. I'm just using fuel all over the place because we have a lot of it. What part is Philippe's derelict? I can't really tell. Oh, I think it's one of those crew cabins, isn't it? I think it's a crew cabin. I was planning to make the station out of those. I don't know if this cabin comes with uh, the mod propellant for the EVA packs, though. Hmm. Well, it seems to. We've got mod propellants on here. Wow, Philippe has gray hair and everything. And Philippe is a pilot. Good times. Whoa, everything's gone crazy. All right. Fortunately, we don't need to worry about that. Oh, unless it bumps into us again. Okay, grab and board. Uh, no more carbon dioxide on rescue two. Well, that's not a danger, is it? I mean, I'm confused. Can you give me a carbon dioxide warnings? That would be a little bit more appropriate. <laughs> I mean, that's not a... That's not a carbon dioxide warning I need to pay attention to. No more carbon dioxide on the mission. It's the opposite of what we need to worry about. Okay, we are passing right over to KSC right there right now. So we should be splashing down pretty close to it. So for those who may not know, um, Philippe uh, is a reference to Harvester, the creator of KSP. The originator. So that's why we absolutely had to rescue Philippe. 
I mean, not that we weren't short on pilots, of course. Okay, splashdown. I assume we've gotten the signs from here, but I never remember. Oh, nope, nope, we have not. Crew report from Kerbin's Water. Keep. <laughs> See, you never know. Should always check. EVA report? Keep. Service sample we haven't done? Keep. Lots of science from this. No, no. Bad, 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 Philippe. Oh, uh, come on. Get back in the pot. Get back in the pot. Okay. Recover. That's important because that science gets us above 90 science and we can unlock something else. Philippe gained 2 XP and has advanced to level 1. Taking a look here... I mean, I feel like we're neglecting some of this stuff. I mean, reaction wheels will become important eventually. Advanced flight control. Well, if we're going to build a station, we're going to need RCS. I mean, for docking and such. Lander can's not a bad deal either. When I say need RCS, it's not really true, but um, it'd be nice to have RCS. It'll be necessary when we have really big things to dock, but right now we're not going to have anything really huge to dock. Uh, to avoid the Wiggly Rocket Syndrome, though, which, uh, which entertaining though it is, and though we have struts now, which uh, mitigates it, maybe I should just unlock this so that we have 2.5 meter parts, or uh, we do have, yeah, these are 2.5 meter parts, and also uh, some additional 1.875 meter parts that'll help stabilize things. Ooh, and we get the Soyuz tanks. And and uh, the fuel ducts. I mean, if we land a Kerbal, uh, Kerbal on Minmus, we're gonna get a bunch of signs for that. So we could probably, you know, wait to unlock some stuff. I think the main thing is to make sure that Kerbal does not launch on a Wiggly rocket. So we will unlock this and we will refit the rocket we have used previously with the larger tanks so that it is not quite so wobbly. Okay, I've decided to go straight to the launch pad with this. We've got Philippe Kerman on his way to Minmus and I've changed out the tanks and done a different paint job on them uh, except for the bottom, that's basically the same. I added fins because I'm tired of flipping and uh, I'm gonna auto strut now. I forgot to auto strut in the VAB. Um, let's do root part and I actually gave the capsule a different paint job too. Um, that's already auto-strutted the heaviest part. Uh, let's auto-strut these even though uh, we've actually got actual struts on those. And uh, these will run for a minute, 60 seconds, and then we'll drop them off. As far as life support's concerned, um, well, it doesn't show the information here, but I made sure we had 60 days of food, water, and oxygen somewhere info there we go um so it says 37 days of water but uh the baguette tanks are now arrayed around one of those uh life support things and that's actually providing a humidity control as well so we should have humidity control now uh i don't know if i can get to the life support thing uh, there it is uh external el the eclss and we've got the uh, humidity control and water recycler running. So in the VAB it said that the water was um, 60 days. Anyway, uh, throttle up. Uh, somebody mentioned that uh, there's a fix for a problem with Kerbalism not having the right numbers, so maybe that's a problem. I haven't gotten that fix in yet. Uh, I'll wait till full release, I think. Unless Philippe dies this time. <laughs> Unless, unless Fleet dies, uh, then I'll probably add in the fix, but uh, otherwise I'll just wait for a full release with the fix in. Alright, here we go. Launch. Ah, looking nice and not wobbly. Ah, looking like a fairly decent rocket. Technically, I don't think we needed the SRBs, by the way, but I decided to put them on for extra margin. Delta V wise, it would have been close without the SRBs, so. 
we're using the same landing format that we used on the moon. No landing struts. We're landing directly on our baguettes. Mainly because I wanted to say that we're landing on our baguettes. Alright, booster set. Very clean. And we're high enough that I am going to turn off the center engine, which is not as efficient in vacuum. And throttle down, too. Heck, we should just shut off. Let's uh, basically go horizontal. <laughs> this, this is a horrible trajectory. It's a horrible trajectory. On the bright side, it still seems like we're going to make orbit on this stage, and we'll be able to... Uh, I'll probably cut it short so that it gets disposed of in the atmosphere. Now, we're probably not going to do an off-plane transfer with Philippe here because that usually takes longer than a direct transfer. Uh, so, we're going to use a mid-course adjustment. Oh, this is getting a little bit out of whack. Alright, that's disposed of, but we used more than I wanted to. Okay, don't need to overdo things just yet, but our apoapsis being so high is not very efficient. I suppose we might as well go around this way. So that should be okay. Putting fleet to use right away. What does it say for life support right now? Okay, it's uh, what I expected. They're all 60 days. So food, water, and oxygen all at 60 days. Okay. Now on to the mid-course adjustment, which we actually need to adjust a little bit because the initial burn wasn't quite the same. Okay, that will be a good periapsis. Now I didn't know about how much um, heat shielding we'd need for our return from Minmus. After all, that's coming in pretty sharply. So I put all the ablator on just in case, for safety's sake. And we'll find out once we get back how much was actually necessary. This drift is somewhat annoying. I actually miss the old days when SAS would just like hold it rigidly and not let go of the vessel. Okay, we've got our approach to Minmus. It's slightly inclined, but that's all right. Make sure our solar panel is firmly facing the sun. We don't have a huge battery on this. Okay, we are in Minmus SOI. Let's get a crew report. Excellent keep, because we expect to bring our Kerbal back. So we don't need to do anything fancy. EV report, keep. And besides, I don't think we have communication. We don't have any antennae on here to transmit back anyway. Okay. Time to make orbit. Want to make sure we don't end up crashing into anything. But at the same time, we're planning on landing, so... That should be good. And we'll look to land, well, somewhere around here. Uh, somewhere that isn't too bumpy, maybe. The flats are always good, but I don't know. The uh, Mimis rotates pretty fast, so by the time we get around to it, I don't know if we're going to be over the flats or not. This this very annoying region that I really don't want to land in. But first, let's do some more science. Uh, crew report. Keep. EVA report. Keep. We've got 50 or so days left of supplies. So wherever, whatever happens to be over here is where I want to land. We'll just cut all of our horizontal velocity when we're right over the target here. Okay. This is not how you're supposed to land, but this is Minmus, so... Everything works. In fact, I'm going to point down so we can hasten our descent, because it's going to take too long otherwise. Alright, that's good enough. Let's separate and use the spark engine to do the rest. I don't know what happened to that decoupler. It seemed to go sideways or something. And 
we are down. All right, good times. Um, crew report. Mimesis Great Flats. Keep. And uh, let's do radiation. 28 signs. Keep. Thermometer. Keep. And EVA. EVA report. And wow, we can take the surface sample from here. 84 science. Yeah, you can seriously milk stuff with Minmus. Anyway, let's board and store that, our contingency sample. And then let's plant the flag. Okay. Philippe at the great. Was it great or greater? Anyway, great flats. Uh, getting to work right away. Yes. We're very impressed. I, I, the jetpack might be a little bit too OP. No, it's fine. I remember when they used to just bounce up on Minmus like crazy. Uh, not intentionally, it was like all sorts of ragdoll stuff going on. But anyway, um, looking good. I'm not going to take any chances. We're just going to bring Philippe back home now. And uh, we will take chances on subsequent missions. But for now, I just want to get it done. SAS on, and off we go. Uh, the engine is sort of clipped into the external life support module here. I have to confess. The external life support module is sort of an awkward shape, to be honest. Definitely not. I would rather have it in Oscar B shape than the long shape that it is in right now. Okay, that's good enough. Let's see. Um, right around here-ish, we should plot to get back home. Yeah, it's all awkward because this Minmus. We might have to do a secondary burn after we get into Kerbin orbit. Make sure we are properly recharging. Yep, that orientation is fine. Okay, we are ready to go for the burn. And going home. That's probably a little bit too steep. Let's go for 24-ish. Uh, 26 is probably all right, but I said 24. All right, there we go. And all that's left is making sure we stay charged. Now I could use the service module fuel in order to slow down a bit and make our re-entry a little bit gentler. But while we're carrying the 200 ablator, I want to see exactly how much goes off on a Minmus return. So we are not going to slow down. Eventually, I'm going to figure out some reusability stuff, but probably I want stage recovery in for that. I don't want to have to land them manually each time. Not that that isn't fun, but, you know, it's a matter of making sure we can get things done and getting out to further distances and testing out Kerbalism rather than just reusability stuff. Well, Philippe seems to have uh, leveled up. We've got additional features here, the normal, anti-normal, and radial in and radial out. I don't like this whole pod heating up thing. Yeah, I mean, why should the pod be heating up at all when we're flat retrograde anyway? The heat shield should be doing its heat shield thing. I don't like this. I noticed it was off to the side a bit. I guess that's that pilot error, but he's ranked up. He shouldn't have this pilot error that makes it off to the side. Maybe if I go surface. Uh, that was not surface. There we go. Shoot. Honestly. All right, but we only lost 40 of later. Jeez. It'll, have, it'll take interplanetary journeys to really use a substantial amount of ablator. Well, just check crew port. No, we've, they've definitely done grasslands. We always do grasslands. 
Grass lens is unavoidable. Okay, we're back from the first of probably many, many Minmus missions. Recover a vessel. Took 17 days overall. And 263, basically, science earned. And Philip is at level 2 now. 6 XP earned. Got a million in the bank. Lots of science. Um, let, let me not spend anything yet, but we do have this new orbital station around the moon contract. I just want something with uh, antenna, docking port, and solar panels that has space for four Kerbals. We will not send a Kerbal with it, um, but we will have a docking port. And then when the pilot that's supposed to be on board comes in a capsule, that'll be the fifth Kerbal. So then when the capsule docks, the full station will, will count for this contract. So let me see what I can put together. Okay, so here we have the Kajina 1 docking target vehicle, named after the Agena target vehicle for the Gemini spacecraft missions. And it's a little bit more than an Agena because it's got the crew cabins here. And that's enough space for four Kerbals. And basically we've got, well, it says 1,200 now, but that's probably sea level, I think. And uh, so we've got enough to transfer over to the moon and make orbit around the moon, basically, is what we've got. It doesn't turn very quickly. Uh, it does have an extra life support module because uh, each of these cabins can only fit one, and we've got scrubbers in both. Um, here, that's Spark. Um, between the Oscar B. fuel tank and the Spark is the life support module. And that has the humidity control. Well, we can just take a look for uh, from here. Info. Oh. Now, okay, it's not showing anything right now, I guess because it's connected to the clamps. But, yeah, it's... It doesn't have any onboard oxygen, though. Or food, or water, or anything like that. But presumably, it'll be able to help with life support when something docks to it. Anyway, it's a cheapy thing. And so we've got antennae, so it said these antenna dock import and can generate power. It can do that. So that's all we need until we get heftier docking ports. I don't want to make something serious when we've only got the docking port junior for now. So anyway, we'll see how this works out. Throttle up, SAS on. And it doesn't have additional shielding, you'll notice. So that's another thing. But again, it's just a cheap solution for the time being until we get more parts. And launch. Let's try and get a better ascent profile than last time, maybe. Uh, it's going off to the side. Uh, mm, I've got the little fins on. Come on, you're not supposed to be doing this when I have fins on. Uh, okay, spin stabilize. Spin stabilize. Uh, okay, I think we're through the worst of it. separation. Okay, and at this altitude we can cut the center engine. This stage should be more than enough to get us to orbit. We dumped the terrier stage after all. Let me see. Oh yeah, we're uh, we're going past. So you can see 1468 meters per second in the docking target. Okay, let's make sure that this stage deorbits. That should be good enough. And it don't well. It has enough to complete orbit, but again, we don't want it to. Separation and ignition of the little spark engine on here. All right. What's the burn time on the spark? Mm, it's four and a half minutes. Oh, we should have dumped the nose cone before. Dang it! Before making orbit. Oh, and let's extend the antennae. Not relays. I, I mean, I thought about putting a relay, but I decided on this instead. Well, there's a little bit of an inclination there. I figure we should make getting a rendezvous with this as easy as possible. 
Okay, well, definitely not like that. So we don't really want to have it inclined. I, well, I don't know, it depends on whether we're trying to get to this from the surface or not, but I don't think we are. This is gonna be obsolete pretty quickly. So let's just add a maneuver to bring that like so. Well, oh well, let's get rid of the nose cone now. Don't know why we brought it with us, but our solar panels on the nose here are pointed at the sun, so that's fine. Moon's right there. Okay, that's better. And there we go, 36 by 35, so we're in a nice little orbit around the moon. Um, we're recharging for now. I think the batteries will be good enough for covering the nighttime side, we'll see. But yep, uh, that's the first step to fulfilling uh, this new orbital station contract. We're doing it on the cheap, but uh, until we get better parts, I'll stick to this. So we'll try and dock a capsule to this, and that should fulfill the contract. But that we will do in the next episode. So with this done, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.